Well, we're glad our youth could be in here with us tonight. We're in Exodus chapter 20, so you can find a, a Bible in the back of the pew there in front of you if you don't have one uh, for y'all that just came in. Uh, but we're in Exodus chapter 20 tonight, and uh, tonight is the conclusion of our devotional series on suicide. And uh, we've talked about uh, several different aspects of suicide over the past several weeks. And we've talked about, uh, you know, the hopeless feeling that someone uh, dealing with uh, suicide feels and how they, they honestly feel like there is just no hope, that there's no, uh, there's no way out of the situation that they find themselves in. And uh, we also talked about how in Psalm 90 it points to the fact that there is hope for the suicidal person and that hope is found in God. That, that, that hope is found in Christ. Uh, we also talked about how in Matthew chapter 14 it talks about uh, Peter uh, falling into the water after he takes his eyes off of Jesus as he's walking on the water and how Christ was able to intervene in his situation. And we also talked about how God, uh, how we ought to allow God to intervene in uh, the situation of those uh, that are uh, dealing with suicide. But then uh, two weeks ago, we talked about uh, the temptation towards suicide and how it's a temptation from, from Satan. It's like any other temptation that we face. Uh, it's simply something that he's using to uh, ruin God's plan for our life or to uh, draw us away from him. And so we talked about uh, the story of Job then. But tonight we're talking about how God opposes suicide. And we're talking about it from Exodus chapter 20. And we're in verse 13. So if that determines what page you need to, to flip to, we're going to go ahead and read it. And it's, uh, it's all of about four words. And it says, you shall not murder. That's it. That's what, uh, you know, that one command out of the Ten Commandments says. It says, you shall not murder. And uh, do you notice that there's no clarification there's no no differentiation between what it's talking about that murder is murder uh, it says you shall not murder keep that in mind see this command is very clear because it doesn't take into account uh, or doesn't distinguish between someone taking their own life or taking someone else's life so right here as we're talking about how God opposes uh, suicide, we see that that's what this scripture tells us, that God is against suicide because of what it does. It, it destroys our, li our physical life here on earth, uh, and really that murder, which is what it is, is sin. And really that any sin does not please God, and that's the way that we have to look at it, uh, because, and therefore God would be opposed to it. See, the Bible teaches that human life is valuable, valuable to God. That's why God is against abortion. That's why uh, God is against murder. That's why the sanctity of human life, as we hear it said, it means so much to God. Because every last individual life is important to God. Every life, every human life is important to Him. And so it's important that we remember that. And the way that we understand every life is important to God is in the in respect to the idea that Christ died on the cross for every human life. And that that ought to really really get our attention, I think I, I think is the best way to put it. Because what Jesus did was he sacrificed himself on a cross in exchange for the eternal redemption of you. For each and every one of us. He, he did that just for you. Just for me. He was willing to exchange his life for ours. And therefore the life of the son of God. Is infinitely valuable. Therefore that means our life. Is infinitely valuable to God. And because of what Jesus did. Our lives are no longer our own. The way we ought to look at it. And we, we read about it in the scriptures. Is that we were bought. We were purchased. We were bought through the price of, or bought for the price of Jesus' blood. So with Jesus' blood being shed on the cross for us, the value of our life is very expensive. The value that, that God puts on us is the value of his own son and the blood that had to be shed for us. Now, God loves his people, and that's what we have to understand is that God loves us. And that's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us to begin with. 
is because of his great love for us. And therefore, if he loves us that much, if he, if he is so invested in us to that degree, then obviously there's a value to us, but there's also a reason, or that shows us the reason that he doesn't, or that he is opposed to murder, or suicide, I guess I should say in this regard. But we know that uh, God loves us, and we read in the scriptures how God has a plan for us. We read in Jeremiah chapter 29 how God tells us that he has a plan for us. He has a future for us and how he has things prepared for us. Not only does he have a home in heaven for those that have a relationship with him, not only do we have a heavenly home if we have that relationship, that he has things prepared ahead of us, plans for our life, things that he wants for us to accomplish, things that he wants to see us do to further his kingdom. Because it's not, it, teenagers, you have, to, you have to catch this for just a second, it's not all about you. Right now, for the next eight to ten years, depending on how old you are, you're going to think that it's all about you. And guess what? It's not. What it's all about is about what God wants for our lives. And it's about what we can do to accomplish his kingdom goals for him. Because that's what we're here for. We're designed for his pleasure. We're designed to have a relationship with him. And that's all based in the fact that he has stuff planned for us. He has stuff ready for us, waiting for us. All we have to do is follow his plan for our life. See what he wants to do with our life. And then fulfill his will in our life as we go through this life. And when we focus on Christ and when we focus on God and what he has for us, the more we realize it's not about me. It's not about what I want. It's not about what I want to do with my life. It's about what God wants to do through me and in me. Yes, some people have the opportunity to follow a certain path in life and, and do what God wants, you know, what they want to do and follow certain careers and things like that. And that's what God has planned for them. Others, God says, you know what, you're headed in this direction, but I want you to go over here and be a missionary or a pastor or follow this path in your life and do this differently than what you had originally planned. And that's because God has plans for us. And sometimes his plans are different than ours, but his plans are always more important than our plans. That's something that we have to understand. And so we understand that God has things planned for us and he has this heavenly home uh, prepared for us. But see, this devotional that we've been talking about through the, the past several weeks. One of the things that we talked about from the very beginning was how if you heard someone talking about suicide or how uh, you, ha you, you know, somebody mentioned it and you, you thought, well, they're not being serious or something like that. It's always important when you hear someone to say, saying something like that to get them help. It's always important to take them very seriously because, as we talked about the first night, you never know what someone is struggling with. You never know what someone is dealing with. And so you need to take it very seriously. So young people, if you hear uh, a friend mention it and you, you think that they're just joking or they're just blowing it, out, you know, blowing it out of proportion or something like that, take it very seriously. It, it's something that we uh, definitely need to. But, see, God has a better answer for them. God has a better answer for us anytime that would be uh, something that uh, someone would be thinking about. They need to talk to a pastor. They need to talk to a Christian counselor. They need to talk to someone who can get them help, uh, who can really help them, I think, is the best way to put it. And what, they, what those uh, counselors are able to do is to really address the, the issues that they're suffering through and really help put it in perspective and help them to see that the, the case that they're dealing with really isn't as hopeless as they think it is. Because they feel like they're in this little box and they can't get out of it and there's no hope and there's no, there's no way things are ever going to change. Uh, but there is. And one, one of the things that they can do is to ask God to enable uh, them to see hope. If they ask for God to show them hope, ask God to help them through the situation, God's going to do that. And so uh, they can trust him with their circumstances. They can trust God uh, with the pain that they're feeling and, and all that they're going through. They're able to trust him and allow him uh, to, uh, to work through, help them work through uh, what they're going through. But tonight's uh, devotional was just simply about how God opposes suicide, how it's not something that he wants because every human life is, uh, is valuable to him. It means something to him. And so when we see that something is important to God, 
as in life is important to God, then it ought to be important to us. And we ought to take that to heart and honestly let that uh, impact our lives. And so as far as the devotional out of the Billy Graham Training Center Bible goes that I normally use, we're done from that aspect. But one of the things that I wanted to touch on was a question that, and I guess you could say this is piggybacking off of the Q&A with the pastor on Sunday nights. But a lot of times when we talk about suicide, we're going to answer a question here, okay, and then, and then we'll be done uh, for tonight. But a lot of times the question that is asked when you start talking about suicide or it comes up uh, is the question of, well, what about the Christian who commits suicide? Do they go to heaven? Or do they go to hell? And uh, that's the question that comes up. Has anybody ever wondered about that or ever thought about that? I mean, I, I know we were out here uh, for uh, collecting for the uh, backpacks for West Virginia. And me and Sean and uh, Dale had a really good conversation about it. Uh, and we were talking about that very, that very topic. And I told him, I said, we're going to get to it in our uh, devotional series. But that's the question is a lot of times is if a Christian commits suicide, do they go to heaven or do they go to hell? And uh, the way I'm going to approach it the same way I did with Dale and Sean out in the parking lot the other day, we're going to look at this very logically, okay? So you hear your teacher say, put your thinking caps on, right? You hear your teacher say that sometimes. That's what we need to do, okay? So even if you need to dust off that thinking cap, put it on, and, and we're going to logically look at this for a few moments, okay? Now, we realize that, that at some point in our life, we are all going to die. If that's a shock to you, I'm sorry. But we do realize that at some point in our life, we're all going to die. Now, logically looking at this, think about it from this perspective. We realize that more than likely when we die, even if we are a Christian, chances are we will not have asked for forgiveness from the last sin that we committed. You know, if I'm you know, driving down the road and, and have an accident... And that accident claims my life, but one of the last things I said was one of the things you ain't supposed to say. Well, then I've, I've not kept true to the command to watch what I say, so to speak. The uh, book of James talks a whole lot about it. But say I, I sin and then I die in that accident. I've died with a sin on my ledger, so to speak. Okay? Everybody follow me. Now... That sin is like any other sin, the sin of lying, the sin of adultery. The, you know, we can go through the Ten Commandments. But we know that when we, if we die like that, we have a sin on our ledger. But does that sin keep me out of heaven? No, it wouldn't because my salvation is based in my faith in Christ. Not because of what I can do or what I can't do in this life. My relationship with Christ is what puts me in heaven when this life is over. And so if I die in that sort of a way and I, you know, I have that sin on my, on my account or my ledger, so to speak, that sin will not keep me out of heaven. Well, let's look at this logically. If the Christian commits murder as their last act, say suicide, is that sin going to keep them out of heaven? It's a sin just like any other sin. Yes, it's a vile sin that unfortunately ruins a human life. But if that's the last sin that they commit, is that sin going to keep them out of heaven if they had a true relationship with Christ? I wouldn't see how that could. Now, somebody, will, the argument is always made, well, you know, suicide is the unpardonable sin. Have you ever heard that before? We hear that, and we've, we've heard that said so many times that people assume that that is in the Scripture. But it's not. That's not in the Scripture. That's completely unbiblical. We'll put it that way, because that's not in the Scriptures. But what is in the Scriptures is the one sin that does keep us out of heaven. The unpardonable sin isn't in the Bible. It is in the Bible, but it's not suicide. It's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. See, Mark chapter 3, verse 29 says, But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They're guilty of an eternal sin sin. What that verse basically means is when we blaspheme or basically reject the Holy Spirit or reject Christ, that's going to keep us out of heaven. We're basically saying, God, I know that Christ died for me. I know that he wants to offer me forgiveness of my sins. He wants to radically change my life and give me this new eternal life, but no thanks. Thanks, but no thanks. I don't want it. 
When we do that, when a person does that, then at that point they're blaspheming the work of the Holy Spirit. They're blaspheming God. They're they're rejecting the Holy Spirit. And at that point, as it says here, they will never be forgiven. Because if they die and do not have a relationship with Christ, have not had their sins forgiven, there's no way to seek forgiveness after this life is over. That's what the scriptures teach us in multiple places, not just here in uh, Mark chapter 3, verse 29. But that is an unpardonable sin, is dying without a relationship with Christ and having that relationship with him. Because what happens is when we go into eternity and we don't have a relationship with Christ, we can't seek forgiveness then. Our only opportunity to seek forgiveness from Christ is in this life, while there's still breath in our bodies and still blood pumping through our veins. So when we look at it from this logical standpoint, when we look at the scriptures as as it is presented, you know, suicide will not keep a person out of heaven, but that shouldn't be their reason for committing it. Because some people will say, well, I can't, you know, this life is going to be horrible for the rest of my life. I'm in that box. I'm hopeless. My case is just awful. I can't, there's no way I'll ever get out of this. Well, life will be better, so I'll just go on to heaven. That's not a logical way to look at this because that's not, that should never be the reason. Because like we've been saying, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Whatever problem we're dealing with in this life is going to be temporary. And yes, it can be, it can be awful. Situations that people deal with in this life, everything from physical problems to mental problems to uh, the emotional distresses that we face in this life, yes, it can, life can be miserable. Life can be horrible. But those are temporary problems that, if we commit suicide, are fixed with a permanent fix. There's no taking it back. There's no changing it. And so it's important that we understand that just because the Scriptures point to the fact that a person who commits suicide would go to heaven if they are, are a Christian, that should never be a... a scapegoat reason for us to do something do that and so it's important that we understand how the scriptures uh, speak to us in this regard but it's also important for us to remember that every life is valuable to God going back to what our devotional is on tonight God opposes suicide because every life is valuable the every one of us and so it's important that we that we remember that and that we hold true to that when we when we know people that are struggling with issues uh, that you know, maybe they've mentioned it, then we need to get them help. We need to do what we can to help them because God values their life so much that he let Jesus die for them. And so it's important that we uh, remember it in that way.